All right, this is the tutorial video on how to make a um, topographic uh, map in Surpack. Uh, if you need to see how to make a database or import the data and then display the survey stations, then watch the first tutorial that was uploaded that I'll show you how to do that. This is just the data processing portion of the topographic lab and the topographic part of your assignment. So to start out, I have already set up my database and imported my data. So I'm going to immediately start to make everything I need to make the topo. Once you have your data imported, you, excuse me, you should kind of, should make sure that your stations have display styles set so you can tell the difference between them. All right. Once all of your survey stations are displayed by their level area, because um, you will need to have all these, the different colors and the different shapes in order to do one of the plots that is required to turn in for your first assignment and for the lab. So you have everything set up. You go to survey, reports, survey, string files of stations. This makes a string file out of all your stations. I'm going to name it topo string auto. You can name it whatever you want. I'm going to give it the ID number of one. This will automatically add a one to the end of whatever name I give it. And then just leave that the same. You guys don't have to change that, just something I do. Just click apply here. And then it'll generate your string, you drag it out. Once it generates the string, there's a few different things that you need to use to clean this up. If I try and make a DTM now, I'll just click apply. You see it generates all of these red circles. That tells me every single place that there is an overlap. Surpack will not generate a 3D mesh, 3D file, 3D model, if you have all this overlap. So you have to go in and fix this, kind of like we showed in class. That you need to use a couple of tools. The first tool you use is a break line by removing a selected segment that allows you to Click on any of two, any line connecting two of the points and to delete it. Do not use the delete a segment tool for this. It will delete everything and you'll have to undo whatever you just did and use the break line segment. The next tool that you need is the join the end of one segment to the beginning of another. And you will use it by clicking on one point and then click on the next point you want to attach it to and it will make a line between them. The final tool that you will need to use is close a segment. Close a segment is used on the last opening in a shape in a segment. And as you, if I click here, oh, well, that's not right. Anyway, um, of course it doesn't work. Um, if everything else was closed, it would have done it. But basically, if everything else was closed, and I was making one concise shape, you know, um, and there's one more tool that you might have to use. It's a uh, delete point. It's this one right here. Uh, in a couple of the areas, whenever the person making taking the survey took their survey, they have a lot of points. For example, there's three points right here that are really close together, and you can likely delete a few of these to clean it up a little bit. If you have the delete point tool selected by just clicking on a point, it will delete it. The reason that the symbols don't disappear is because this is a display survey station. The survey station's point itself still exists in the database, but the point on this segment, on the string that you created, no longer exists. 
Um, and those are all the tools that you'll need to use for this. This is up to you guys to do. And I'm not going to spend a bunch of time in this video going through and showing you exactly how I would clean up this string. Once you have the string all cleaned up like this, it'll allow you to make your DTM. As you can see, I no longer have any overlaps, although this is not perfect either. For example, if I redisplay survey stations, you can see that I have, in this shape, it encloses points from the road and points from the edge. The better way to have done this would be to have had this, where I'm kind of outlining right now, be its own shape, because that is representative of the area between the road and down below in the mucking site. And having the road be fully enclosed, kind of like it is in this part here, that way it generates the road as a flat surface rather than what it's going to do where it triangulates between this point, this point, and this point, or this point, this point, this point, and makes a dip where there's actually flat. But that's something for you to consider whenever you're fixing it or whenever you do your own surveys and you go out and see that, hey, maybe instead of zigzagging back and forth across the road, you can go up the right side of the road around and then back down around and that way whenever you come into surpack and you import your data it will already create the road to where it is outlined you don't have to do any extra cleaning up you might have to disconnect it from say this string here and make it its own shape string but besides that it will generate completely correctly to how you serve it to make a dtm from the string all you do is go to surfaces, create DTM from layer, and then you just click apply. Um, this makes a 3D mesh file, whatever you want to call it, that triangulates the positions of each. Well, it just triangulates a surface, essentially. Um, Surpack is running really, really slow right now. But as you can see, kind of like what I was talking about with how the road would not generate correctly. You can see right here where the road kind of has an angle in it that is not there. It should be completely flat all the way across, but it's not. But that does not matter. Once you create your DTM, make sure that you save it. You go to File, Save, String DTM, and then you save it. going to save it as topo uh, dt. Alright, and then once that's saved, I'm going to clear my graphics layer and drag the DTM back out into the view window. Once you have your DTM created, in order to make a topo of it, you go to surfaces, Go to, yeah, you go to, in order to do the contouring or the topo that is required for the lab, you go to surfaces, contouring, and contour DTM file. Wait a minute, respect the thing. In this window, you'll click those three dots and you'll choose whatever DTM file you made your topo. You will leave all of the rest of the settings the same and your location whatever location that you put in here this will be your string palace name so i'm going to name this contour 
uh, top of contour. And then make sure you check this box to create an index contour file. And I'm going to name it topo, top of topo index. And then give it an index value of 10. Once you have it all set up like this, you can put whatever names you think make sense in here. Click apply. And then it automatically generates a bunch of contour strings. I'm going to clear this out and I'm going to grab just my contour string out for now. Um, as you can see, it's all sorts of colors and it's all kind of neat looking and then it has all these jagged edges as well. No topo maps don't look like that. They're pretty smooth. So what you need to do is go to, to make it smoother and make it all one color. Go to edit, string, read number range. First, this is to change the color. String range 1, comma 100. That selects any string in the range of 1 from 100. The way that Serpak color strings, um, it puts them on different ranges, so to speak. So a range one string has a white color, a range two string has a dark blue color, a range three string has a light blue color, so on and so forth. Each string number uh, corresponds to a specific color that Sir Pat makes it. And then I'm just going to make it three, which will make it that light blue. I then go back to edit again, string smooth, uh, string range does not matter. If you don't put it in a string range, it'll just select all strings. And I'm going to make number of lines per segment 10. Leave it on spline, click apply, and it automatically smooths out most of those jagged edges. Once you've renumbered it and you've smoothed it, you save it, your string is DTM. Um, and I'm going to name it smooth. And then I'm going to clear the window and repeat all of those steps again for the index string. So to start, I'm going to go to edit. I'm going to so back. String renumber range. I'm going to do 1, 100 again. But this time I'm going to give it a string range of 2, which, as I said, will give it that darker blue color. I'm then again going to go edit string smooth. And this time, since I've already smoothed one string, it will give the same other things. I just click apply, and then it smooths it. Once again, make sure that you save this string DTM. Uh, once again, I'm going to save it as smooth. And then once it saves, I'm going to reset the graphics layer, and I'm going to drag both of the smooth strings out into the viewing window. Now, keep in mind that your string files and your connector files and all that stuff will not look exactly like mine. They should look close to this. Uh, once you have both of those files created and colored, you're ready to plot. Um, to see the actual instructions on how to plot a file and how to save it, there is a video, it's the third video, I believe, yes, yeah, the third video, and it shows you how to export all of the files, how to plot and print all the files from Serpac. It's really convoluted. It seems completely redundant, but it is what works. And I wish that there was another way. Uh, but I'm going to show you the two uh, plotting setups that you will need to print from. So the first one, if we go to plotting auto plot, give it a minute to think. The thing that will be the same about every single time that you plot is you will set this sheet size to letter, it will be fit to screen, and then you will not change any of these. The two differences are that um, the first screen that you want to print is just this screen right here that you see. It's just the contour map with the index file overlaid. So to do that, I'm going to click on raster data, render surfaces, and 300. Anytime that you are exporting DTMs or strings like this, I recommend checking this box. Click apply. 
um, your title block options will pop up. I'm just going to put my name, uh, the class, and then the group. Actually, I said this should probably this should not be class. This should be lab slash assignment. And then your group number. Apply. It'll pop up another screen asking how what you want to do. Make sure that it is on 100 and you have border ticks. Click apply again. And then uh, this is what the screen should look like. Uh, see how to export it. Watch the video, the tutorial three. Uh, that'll show you how to export it. Uh, the next thing that you need to print out, the first thing that you need to do is display your. Oh, shoot. Uh, the first thing you need to do is display your survey stations. So, and then you go to plotting again, auto plot, and this time you do vector data, leave all your other settings the same. The other thing that you need to do before you apply is up here you have a main tab and a legends tab. Go to legends and check your whatever you call it. Uh, it's basically your level area. This will make a table in, in a corner and it will show you what each of these symbols correlate to. Apply. Enter all of the same things here that you did previously. Make sure it's on border ticks again. Once you have everything plotted and if it plots correctly, this is what your screen should look like. It'll have your uh, two uh, topo strings, your two cont your contour, and your index, along with all of the points that you took displayed over it. And then I did not enter the title block because I had to redo it real quick, and I didn't feel like entering it. And then it'll also have the table showing the, uh, the legend down at the bottom left-hand corner here, showing what each of these points correlate to their little area. There's been an issue that's been happening with Surpack recently, and a couple of these people in senior design have also been having it. Uh, whenever you go to plot, this pops up. Um, it is a licensing issue with Surpack, from what I have found. Um, if it happens to you while you're working on the assignment, make sure that you save everything. And then you can go to File, Licensing Manager, and click on Geova Licensing. And then sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. If changing it to Geova licensing does not work, you are going to have to reopen the program. Um, if you have any questions about this, let me or Eugene or Tagi know. This is meant to be more of a refresher to go along with the instructions as you guys have already done this in the class.